So it might be hard to believe standing here today, but beneath our feet, about two kilometres down, there is a huge quantity of natural gas here and across Lancashire, locked up in shale. We believe and have made an assessment that there's hundreds of trillions of cubic feet of gas in the shale. Total UK annual demand is about three, so there's enough gas down there to heat British homes for decades to come. We know that because we've drilled wells and done surveys across the area. What we don't know is how much of that gas locked up in the ground we can get out of the ground. And that's really the point of what we're looking to do here at this site at Rosaker and at another very similar site about seven kilometres away from here at Preston New Road. At each of those two sites, we propose to drill up to four exploration wells. We'll then hydraulically fracture the rock and we'll let the gas in the shale flow out of the shale to the surface and we'll measure the flow rate. Uh, if it flows well, and we, we have every expectation that it will, we'll tie it into the national gas grid system. There's a main pipeline just 25 metres away from this site, and we'll flow it over an extended period, probably 18 months to two years. In order to do that, we have to apply to Lancashire County Council for planning permission, and accompanying those uh, applications are detailed environmental impact assessments. Uh, Arup, who are a world-leading consultancy in this field, have completed those environmental impact assessments, and what you're going to see in the rest of this video are the experts from Arup in each of the subject areas giving you a brief outline of what they did and how they went about doing that. Arup are involved in some of the most high profile and complex projects in, in the world and our fundamental approach to these projects is all about quality, doing the best job that we can do and doing the best job that needs to be done. Uh, for the project. So uh, Quadrilla have appointed us as independent consultants to do environmental impact and risk assessments uh, for um, their two proposed projects, shale gas exploration projects in Lancashire. These are the first two multi-well exploration projects in shale gas in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, and so as a consequence, our approach has been one of looking at them in absolute detail and taking a very thorough and detailed approach. We've had over 100 site visits uh, on each of the projects. Uh, we, we've drawn on a complete range of expertise that we have in Arab, over 25 disciplines. We have had extensive community consultation, uh, really good input from communities, from uh, parish councils and other key stakeholders, and that's helped to shape uh, our analysis and uh, the mitigations that uh, uh, we've proposed. Um, we've covered a broad range uh, of, of issues in the environmental statement. Um, there are four particular areas that, that the communities were particularly concerned about, and those are in the areas of transportation, the impact of noise, uh, induced seismicity, and the potential for impact on water usage and water contamination. Transport is a key issue on many construction projects, and it's formed an important part of our assessment. Firstly, we've looked at the existing traffic conditions and undertaken some detailed site surveys. Secondly, we've looked at the proposed traffic flows, and of those, heavy goods vehicles are the most important. On average, five vehicles come to site and five vehicles leave site per day. Thirdly, we've looked at all the route options available to us, and we've selected routes which have a minimum impact on residential properties, uh, avoid sensitive uses such as schools, and are safe to, to operate. Finally, we will proactively manage traffic during the course of the works with a, a traffic management plan agreed with the local highways authority. We believe we have a solution for transport which is safe, is within the capacity of the network and is acceptable in transport terms. So the environmental statement considers the potential impacts of the scheme on the water environment and that includes the surface water and groundwater. So to begin with, we developed a detailed understanding of the geology and the hydrogeology of the site. Um, this is from the fracturing zone all the way up to the surface and this includes uh, identifying surface water features like watercourses and ponds in the surrounding area. So our assessment can broadly be divided into three sections. Firstly, we considered the uh, activities at the surface, including operations on the well pad uh, and activities that have the potential to cause a spill uh, into local watercourses, for example. Secondly, we considered um, well construction and well integrity and the potential for pathways for contamination via the well bore. And thirdly, we looked at hydraulic fracturing proposals, and this includes uh, the potential for fracture growth and the maximum extent of fractures, and uh, also the hydraulic fracturing fluid composition. 
Now, taking into account Quadrilla's operational and environmental uh, management and monitoring uh, proposals, um, our assessment uh, considers that the potential significance of effects on the water environment are low, and this is measured against the Environment Agency's uh, environmental risk assessment framework for shale gas. As part of our environmental impact assessment that we're undertaking for Quadrilla, we're looking at the potential impact from induced seismicity from the hydraulic fracturing process. The first step in this, of course, is to look at the geology of the sites, and in particular to look for geological faults which are to be avoided. Quadrilla are establishing a state-of-the-art seismic monitoring network. This seismic monitoring forms part of Quadrilla's rigorous risk management strategy which is based on the traffic light system required by the Department of Energy and Climate Change in the UK. The green, amber and red system whereby if a magnitude on the Richter scale of greater than 0.5 occurs, work will be stopped, pressure will be released and discussions will occur with the Department of Energy and Climate Change on how to proceed. We've been to the site and measured the existing noise levels, so we have a baseline against which to carry out our assessment. We've then looked at the noise that will be generated from the various different activities, so the uh, creation of the well pad, the drilling, the hydraulic fracturing, um, the decommissioning and restoration once the works are complete. And we've also looked at the noise from the off-site road traffic. We've taken noise from other sites where these activities have taken place, or from British standards, uh, to give us a source noise level. Um, and then we've put those, that information into a three-dimensional digital noise map which takes account of the topography and buildings and so on so we can get a, a robust understanding of the, the noise levels around and at people's properties. So we know from the model the levels of noise uh, but the noisiest activities will be of uh, relatively short duration, they won't be continuous coupled with the need to monitor the activities to ensure that noise levels stay within limits um, we've concluded that the noise effects from the site will not be significant. We're potentially at the start of a new industry in the UK and the legacy of our work will be to help uh, Quadrilla, the broader industry and other key stakeholders in thinking and shaping the future of the shale gas exploration industry in the United Kingdom. Uh, our work is now available uh, online publicly uh, and is currently subject to a new consultation process. So what you'll have seen over the course of the last few minutes in this video will give you a flavour of the extraordinarily thorough job that Arab have completed on this environmental impact assessment. We know that this can be done safely and securely and in an environmentally responsible way and we will do that. And as the planning applications go through the system we stand today on the threshold of what could be a whole new industry, not just in the UK, but in Western Europe. And working with Arab, we believe that we have set a benchmark for that industry and we continue to do that as we work through these sites and demonstrate how much of this gas can be recovered.